So, the future of Pat O'Brien. I'm the lead guitarist for Cannibal Corpse. And since I'm making a video in regards to Pat O'Brien and Cannibal Corpse, I figured I'd wear this fucking Cannibal Corpse jersey that I bought at the fucking uh, Summer Slaughter Tour in 2016. Yeah, so it's almost, it'll be almost three years ago. Um, but yeah, that was a killer fucking gig. Uh, Summer Slaughter 2016. Uh, Cannibal Corpse were the headliners. Uh, they played alongside with um, bands, a uh, band called Ingested, uh, Legendary Crecian, uh, Revocation, Carnifex. I don't really listen, listen to Carnifex all that much, I'll be honest. Uh, who, who else played that night? I mean, Suffocation, of course. Fucking Nile. Uh, after the Burial. And and the headliners, of course, to close the night were fucking cannibal motherfucking corpse. So yeah, that's where I got this killer fucking jersey. So I figured I'd just show it off uh, while I'm on this topic. And um, so yeah, I mean, for those who've been sleeping under a rock as of late, I mean, we all know that Pat O'Brien was, um, you know, faced some serious fucking charges at the beginning of December of 2018 when his house was on fire and while all that madness was happening, he broke into the neighbor's house saying that the rapture was going to happen and that the end times were near and... Uh, I mean, his his neighbors even, like, testified later that night, or whatever the fuck, that, you know, that, that he had broken in, that he looked scared, that he kept on saying that, you know, that the rapture was going to happen, and that um, somebody was chasing him, somebody was after him, and, um, I mean, just, you know, just insane, like, something out of a fucking movie, you know, just, while Pat's house was in flames, you know, three months ago, on December the 10th, um, not only is all that happening, yet he's breaking into his neighbor's house, and he's telling people to, you know, get on the floor, and, and the people are chasing him, that he's paranoid, and all this stuff, and if that's not bad enough, once he, apparently once Pat left his neighbor's house, while his house was on fire, um, he ends up charging at a cop, uh, you know, that, you know, assault, trying to assault an officer with, with a deadly weapon, with, you know, with a fucking knife. I mean, luckily he didn't fucking stab or kill the fucking cop, but, I mean, I mean that charge is still there, you know, and, and aggravating, aggravated assault on the officer with a deadly weapon, I mean, that's still... I think in the state of Florida, that can easily be, I mean, 25 to life, I mean, and that's that, you know, Merry fucking Christmas, but, yeah, man, it's just, I don't know, I mean, because, I mean, uh, Cannibal Corpse is going to be really busy, you know, at the beginning of 2019, obviously, we're already fucking three months in, uh, but, yeah, I mean, th all this shit can happen at a worse time, I mean, fucking... Corpse is going to be really busy this year, and and they have their temporary replacement, um, which couldn't have been, you know, a, a, a better, perfect man for the job, fucking Eric Rutten, um, legend in his own right, I mean, you know, that's like his brainchild, uh, the band called uh, Hate Eternal, also the ex-guitarist for uh, Morbid Angel back in the day, um... So, I mean, I mean, Eric Rutten has his credentials in, in his own legendary right. But, but, I mean, they couldn't have found a better replacement. Uh, according to Countable Corpse, you know, they've released, after all this madness has ha you know, happened, they've released statements saying that, that you know, they were, they're going to try and get Pat the help that he needs, and whether it was some kind of, you know, mental health issue, or just... Uh, fucking with some bad drugs, or, I don't know, alcoholism, or whatever the fuck caused all that shit to happen that night, 
you know, three months ago. And, um, Cannibal Corpse has said that they've that they've that they've found a temporary replacement for Pat until Pat gets better and he gets the help he needs and hopefully if he's not going to have to do any major time which I think the key to all of that are going to be when it comes to the court dates because I mean Pat's not in j Pat uh I think only spent like 3-4 days in jail and then he got free on a $50,000 bond so he's free right now but I mean he's still going to have to go to court for all those fucking charges and shit so he's not He's free now, but he's not a free man. Uh, until all that, until all those, you know, shit happens in court. But I think the key to all of that are, are going to be his neighbors. Honestly, I mean, I'm no judge, I'm no fucking, I'm no lawyer, but if his neighbors are really like stern and and harsh, and they're like, you know, fuck him, we want him to pay, you know, the fullest of all. You know, all the charges, all penalties, you know, just no holds barred. We want him to fucking, he's going to pay, and he's better fucking pay, and blah, 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 blah. You know, depending on if, if the neighbors are really aggressive, and if that's the nature they're going to go, or if they're, have a, you know, if they're somewhat lenient, have a sense of leniency, and they're like, you know what, we've, He's been our neighbor for a few years now. He's always been a calm guy. He's always uh, kind of keep to himself kind of guy. Um, and it was obvious that night, you know, when he broke into our house, that he wasn't himself. He was, you know, was talking and, and saying shit about the rapture and how people were after him. And he looked kind of, had a weird paranoid kind of mental breakdown type of look in his eye. So, I mean, if his neighbors go that route, as opposed to wanting to, to him to face the full, you know, they're going to be dicks about it, you know, to put it short. But, I mean, granted, I mean, yeah, someone breaks into your house and is talking about the rapture and, and someone's chasing you. I mean, yeah, it's going to be hard to just be like something you don't just forgive. It's not like spilling a glass of water. I understand that. But I think that's going to be the key in, in this whole case, man, and, and how his neighbors are going to choose to go with this, you know, going forward. And if they're going to be harsh and, and want the full penalties of everything that went down, or if they're going to be lenient with them and, and not want to press charges on certain things. But we'll see. Um... It just sucks. It's crazy. I mean, what's the... I mean, when the fire, mar fire marshals got there the next day at Pat's house, once all, all the flames had died down, I mean, they... What they found inside Pat's house was, uh... Wasn't your average home. I mean, they found 50 shotguns. I mean, literally, 50 shotguns. Uh, ten semi-automatic rifles, two Uzi-style rifles, twenty handguns, two flamethrowers, and boxes and boxes of fucking ammunition and ammo. And, I mean, and from what I read when I was doing some research, I don't think he owned a permit for every single one of those firearms. So, I mean, I don't know. It's going to be tough, man. I mean... just gonna be tough. Like I said, first and foremost, you know, music is life, metal for life, metal or die, but I mean, first and foremost, when it comes to either that or doing 20 fucking years in prison, it's pretty, it's not all that hard to know which one you'd rather choose, right? But, um, I mean, Pat, I mean, I mean, the Cannibal Boys, I mean, they're getting up to an age, man. I mean, Pat, Pat O'Brien's 53 years old right now. 53, so, I mean, I think you don't want to spend the last 20 years of your life in a fucking cell. I mean, fuck that. But, I mean, tough to wait. Um, 
hopefully by the end of like December 2019 we'll have more of a update with you know what's going on with Pat if he's gonna if he's gonna be free of these charges if he's gonna gonna have to do some time if he's not gonna have to do time I mean because Cannibal Corpse has made it seem like if all is well and he gets you know whatever treatment that he needs that, that he's he's a, he's he's gonna be back in the band but I mean that's what they say now I mean I don't know I don't know if Metal Blade if anything else comes out in the court of law while all this is unfolding I don't know if Metal Blade's even gonna want him back on the label or if Cannibal's gonna want him back in the band or if they're just gonna be like you know what sorry we're gonna have to part ways tough decision but something we just feel we have to do I uh, know uh, I'm just trying to think in a positive light it, it would be cool if out of all this shit and fuckery a positive came out of it and in the light of you know Pat not, not having to have to do any time and if he's not allowed back into Cannibal Corpse and Pat then goes on to form his own band where he's the lead guitarist, he's the main songwriter, and you know, instead of one killer band and Cannibal Corpse, because of all this unfortunate bullshit, at the beginning of like 2020, hypothetically speaking, uh, instead of having one killer band and Cannibal Corpse, we have two killer metal band, death metal bands. You know, you have Cannibal Corpse and you have Pat O'Brien's new band. Um, I mean, that's just wishful thinking at this point. That, that would be fucking killer, too. I mean, anything that that motherfucker does, I would full-on support him. And I know tons and tons of people in the metal community would would be behind Pat and just support him 100% in everything he fucking does, whether it's with or without Cannibal fucking Corpse. So, I mean... So yeah, I mean, I'll just do with that, you know. All in all, you know, they they could for for now for this for this tour, uh, not only the Slayers' final tour with those U.S. Uh, leg leg tours that they're gonna have in the, in the near future, and also Cannibal Corpse doing uh, that Decibel Magazine tour in 2019. Um, so yeah, I mean, Cannibal Corpse and for now they couldn't have found a better replacement for Pat, you know, and it being Eric Rutten, I mean, he's the perfect man for the job, um, I mean, he's known, Eric Rutten has known the Cannibal Boys for fucking decades, you know, in the fucking metal scene, um, I mean, Eric Rutten's produced four Cannibal Corpse albums, I mean, his first one was Kill, I believe, then it was Evisceration Plague, then Torture, and then Red Before Black in 2017. So, I mean, he produced the Cannibal Corpse album like two years ago. So, I mean... So, yeah, I mean, it's not like they just drew names out of a hat. And I was like, well, it looks like Eric Rutten's going to be the replacement for Pat for now. Until we figure all this shit out. So, I mean, that's cool. I know Eric Rutten's real psyched. And he feels he... I mean, this man has been practicing his ass off for weeks and weeks, months now, just trying to learn the whole Cannibal Corpse set. And he just says, you know, he has, he's going to pay homage to Pat O'Brien the way he deserves to be paid. And he's going to he's gonna give it his all, and he's going to give it 110%, because that's all he knows. That's the only gear he knows it how to go, you know? That's fucking Eric Rutten, so... Let's we'll see what happens. Um, again, all in all, I just want to end it with this. I mean, Pat O'Brien, we all have your back, brother, here in the fucking metal community. I know this is tough and rough time, and, um, sometimes it feels like there's just no fucking light at the end of that goddamn motherfucking tunnel, but we're rooting for you, brother. We're all rooting for you. Wish you the best going forward and anything and everything that is that you decide to do with your future. Uh, just hope you get that help you need and just keep on shredding that guitar. And just keep on laying down those sick fucking mind-bending fucking riffs that 
only Pat motherfucking O'Brien can do. And once you're back in uh, full Cannibal Corpse health, uh, hope to see you around, brother. Hope to hope to see you around on tour. Pero. You got your back, Pat. You know, in the metal scene, rock and roll, heavy metal, it has its peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. And after, like, 2012, the metal scene was kind of getting stale, and it was just kind of like, Bleh. There wasn't that many good bands coming out anymore, nothing all that original. Everything just sounded like a carbon copy of, it, of its fucking former self. And, you know, some years went by, and it was like, alright, alright, 2015, 2016, and then at the end of, like, 2016, but 2017 and on, these past two years, there's been a fucking, like, resurgence in the fucking, like, just death metal community, and there's just been a plethora of fucking killer, amazing, like, Freshly decaying fucking corpses, like, at the f fucking foreground of, you know, all these fucking uh, extreme metal music fans. And these past two years have been really fucking exciting for the fucking metal community. Because it's like, it's alive again. There's, there's a breath of fresh fucking decaying, just weird, ominous stench in the fucking air. And us fucking metalheads just couldn't be any fucking happier about it. Because it's, it's back. It's fucking alive again. And Pat O'Brien needs to be around to see that. And he will be around to see that. And he's going to be a part of it. And nothing but positive thoughts, brother. Stay metal.